think we were coming for a ruling. There is an issue that has emerged which we wish to address the court Just before you deliver that ruling Just about the question of the fate of the next persons. Just a moment. Just a moment. We finish with introduction first before we go to issues. Oh, sorry. Uh, uh, I beg your pardon. You know, yesterday... Mr. Ndegwa? Yes, you know. If Amata is coming for a ruling... Yeah, yes. but it's a very sensitive issue, Your Honor, I would wish you to hear us. About what happened when you issued your orders for the accused person to be held at the election. Okay. A serious one, Your Honor. I wish you could hear us, and then we'll, uh, you'll give your, 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 your ruling. You have any medical facility up to now. He has not taken any medication. He was held in police cells at Kledeshua. You know, and again, he was not allowed to access any foods. All the accused persons. Number two, Your Honor, and the most grievous one. tells us that a group of well-built-up men, totaling to about number, uh, 30 in number, were released to the police cells by the police with instructions to assault men and perhaps even eliminate the accused person. I'm writing, I'm writing, please. Okay. You know, our clients discloses to us, and most importantly, the second accused person. When he left your court yesterday, He was a man fit enough, but today he's all dented. Having been assaulted, he has bruises. happened in a police station, Kilelesho police station, in a police cell.
you know, how did those people access Just yourself? volume of that microphone is too high. Yes. Adjust it downwards. Mm. Yes. How did who allowed entry and access? If we cannot be safe in a police cell or in a police station, where else? Where else will Kenyans go? Who else shall protect these Kenyans? You know, as I invite, my, before I invite my learned friends, just to make an observation on it. Permit me to inform you, Your Honor, that Article 25 has outlawed any form of torture. I have two applications to make, Your Honor. Yes, can you make it? Why do you insist that I have to hear you before delivering the ruling? You know, because you have heard the gist of it. Uh, I just want to understand you. Why do, yeah, you, yeah, why do you insist the that... The application uh, I'll be making uh, will require the attendance of the OCS, Kiledesho Police Station, to come and tell us what happened. Okay. Number two, I'll be making an application for... Just, the just a moment, please. Yes. I think now we need more order. Is it an application you feel I will not be able to hear after delivering my ruling? No, you can hear it. I'm well guided. Is it not proper that I first deliver my ruling, then I hear your application? I'm well guided by, by your wisdom, Your Okay. I have lunch. Okay. So we'll pause there. Once I'm done with my ruling, then you can pick up from where you have stopped. I'm well guided, Ruling is a shop. He gently face a charge of conspiracy to commit subversive activity. Contrary to section 77, subsection 1 of the penal code, each of the seven accused persons denied the charge. In the notice of filed on the same date, expressed as brought under the provisions of article 20, articles numbers 24 25 <coughs> and 49 sub article 1 f g and h of the constitution of kenya and sections 26 a and 123 a of the criminal procedure code and all enabling provisions of the law the prosecution sought the following orders, namely, I quote, that the, the application be heard on priority basis upon each of the respondents taking plea, number two, that the Honorable Court be pleased to find that the prosecution applicant has established compelling reasons to deny each of the respondents bail, number three, that pursuant to prayer two above, this Honorable Court be pleased to deny each of the respondents bail and to order their detention pending the completion of investigations 
the basis of the instant charges. End of quote. The application is based on four grounds on the of instant charges. Number three, that there is real likelihood that each of the respondents will interfere with witnesses to be called against them in support of the instant charges. And finally, four, that there is real likelihood that the respondents will continue committing similar offenses were they to be released on bail, end of quotes. The application is further supported by a 14 paragraphs of David, sworn by number 75579, Copro Geoffrey Mwangi, filed on 20th of July, 2023. The application was heard by way of oral submissions by both the Prosecution Council and the Defense Council for all the accused persons. And with respect, I will not reproduce the submissions made by the said Council in this ruling, owing to constraint of time. I have perused the application, the supporting affidavit, and considered the submissions made by Council and the authorities relied upon in the course of submissions. The main point for determination is whether the prosecution has established compelling reason why any of the accused persons hearing should not be released on bail or bond pending trial in line with the provisions of Article 49, sub Article 1 H of the Constitution of Kenya. What constitutes compelling reason is well captured in the case of Republic versus DKN 2021 EKLR where the High Court said as follows, I quote, the Court of Appeal in Michael Juma, Oyamo and Another versus Republic 2019 EKLR adopted the definition of the phrase, quote, compelling reasons in the case of J, oh, sorry, in the case of Republic versus Jackton, Malandi and three others, criminal case number 55 of 2009, where the learned judge held as follows that, quote, the phrase compelling reasons would denote reasons that are forceful and convincing as to make the court feel very strongly that the accused should not be released on bond. Bail should not therefore be denied on fl flimsy reasons, but on real and cogent grounds that meet the high standards set by the Constitution, unquote. The court went further to lay down some of the compelling reasons to include the likelihood that the accused will fail to attend court, commit or abet the commission of a serious offense, endanger the safety of victims, individuals or the public, interfere with witnesses or evidence, endanger national security or public safety, and where it is necessary for the protection of the accused. Section 123A of the Criminal Procedure Code, which was introduced by Statute Law Miscellaneous Amendment Act of 2014, provides as follows, quote, subsection 1, subject to Article 49 1H of the Constitution and notwithstanding Section 123, in making a decision on bail and bond, the court shall have regard to all the relevant circumstances and in particular A, the nature and seriousness of the offense, B, the character and antecedents, associations and community ties of the accused persons, C, the defendant's record in respect to fulfillment of obligations under previous grants of bail, and D, the strength of the evidence of having committed the offense. Subsection 2, a person who is arrested or charged with any offense shall be granted bail unless the court is satisfied that the person A has previously been granted bail and has failed to surrender to custody and that if released on bail, whether or not subject to conditions, is likely that he would fail to surrender to custody and B should be kept in custody for his own protection. The Bail bond policy guidelines under Section 4.9 further lists factors to be considered in determining what compelling reasons are 
and include a the nature of the charge or offense and the seriousness of the punishment to be meted out if the accused person is found guilty b the strength of the prosecution's case c character and antecedents of the accused person d the failure of the accused person to observe bail bond terms on previous occasions is a good ground for denying bail or bond e likelihood of interfering with witnesses f the need to protect the victim or victims of crime from the accused person g relationship between the accused person and potential witnesses h child offenders i accused person is a flight risk j whether accused is gainfully employed h so, sorry k public order peace or security and l protection of the accused person end of quotes the principal consideration in every application with regard to whether or not an accused person should be released on bail or bond pending trial is whether an accused person if so released is likely to turn up for trial that is premised on the presumption of innocence as provided under article 50 sub article 2a of the constitution of kenya the nature of charge however is a relevant consideration presumption of innocence notwithstanding but bearing in mind still that every charge is subject to proof to the required standard the charge against the accused persons is punishable by a term of imprisonment for seven years section 77 subsection 1 of the penal code under which the charge is preferred provides as follows i quote any person who does or attempts to do or makes any preparation to do or conspires with any person to do any act with a subversive intention or utters any words with a subversive intention is guilty of an offense and is liable to imprisonment for a term not exceeding seven years end of quotes in their submissions the prosecution council relied on the provisions of sections sections 26A and 123A of the Criminal Procedure Code and paragraph 4.9A, C and E of the Bail Bond Policy Guidelines. One of the reasons advanced by the prosecution is that the accused persons are likely to interfere with witnesses. It is not specified which of the seven accused persons is likely to interfere with which witness and the likely manner of such interference. The authority of Jeffa versus Republic, 1973, East Africa Law Reports at page 39 is relevant to the matter at hand. In that case, it was held at page number 41 as follows, I quote, time and again, this court has said that the true test of a bail application is whether the granting of the application would be detrimental to the interest of justice. It is for the prosecution to satisfy the court that this would be so if bail is granted. Dealing with the question of tampering with, witness, with witnesses, Wilson, acting CJ, as he then was said in Bagwaji, Kakbai versus Republic, Volume 1, Times Law Reports at page 143, quote, the test laid in English cases were that there should be a definite allegation of tampering or attempted tampering with witnesses supported by proved or admitted facts showing reasonable cause for the belief that such interference with the with the course of justice was likely to occur if the accused was released. In the present case, there was no more than mere assertions by the prosecutor that the applicant would interfere with the prosecution witnesses if released on bail, end of quotes. The defense counsel submitted that the affidavit in support of the application is not dated. The prosecution counsel in response submitted that the affidavit 
are the same as the grounds on the body of the application. There is no dispute that the supporting affidavit on record bears no date. Section 5 of the Oaths and Statutory Declarations Act, Chapter 15 of the Laws of Kenya provides as follows, I quote, Every commissioner for oaths before whom any oath or affidavit is taken or made under this act shall state truly in the jurat or attestation at what place and on what date the oath or affidavit is taken or made, end of quotes. The jurat, <coughs> excuse me, the jurat on the affidavit in support of the application does not satisfy the requirements of the said provision alongside Rule 10 of the Oaths and Statutory Declarations Rules and the schedule thereto. The Prosecution Council urged the court to invoke the provisions of Article 159 of the Constitution and overlook the defect of non-indication of the date on the affidavit. That invitation is merited as the court ought to focus on administering substantial justice with minimal focus on peripheral defects. As Gikonyo J said in the case of Barnaby Properties Limited versus Sandra Stocks Limited 2015 EKLR when dealing with objection on defect in the jurat, I quote, we are most lucky jurisdiction now that Article 159, sub Article 2D of the Constitution expressly depreciates such technicalities in favor of substantive justice. I dismiss the obje objection based on jurat and hold that the affidavit is proper for all purposes of and intents, end of quote. Nevertheless, a holistic look at the said affidavit does not disclose compelling reason to warrant denial of bail or bond to the accused person's hearing. In the sum, for the foregoing reasons, I find that the notice of motion dated 20th of July 2023 is not merited for the reason that the prosecution has not established compelling reason to warrant denial of bail or bond to any of the accused person's hearing. What then remains for determination is the bail and bond terms, taking into consideration the nature of charge, presumption of innocence notwithstanding, I consider the following terms appropriate and reasonable. Each of the seven accused persons is granted bond of Kenya shillings 200,000 with one surety of the same amount with alternative cash bail of Kenya shillings 100,000 with one contact person orders accordingly and that is the end of the ruling. So, Mr. Ndegwa, you can pick up from where you said I have one torture for well and inhuman treatment of any person, not just the arrested persons, any persons. Your Honor, sorry to interject uh, with respect to my learned colleague, and uh, I take very seriously uh, the allegations that he's making. It's very unfortunate that those allegations have to come from the bar without any document in support of those allegations, and we have to sit and, and listen. I would plead with him, still again upholding the seriousness of those allegations, that he maybe uh, looks for a way of his clients getting out. Meanwhile, bring something that this court can look at, because we are officers of this court, and we know the rules. The rules are that he cannot be giving us matters of fact from the bar. However, very serious we take them. So we invite him that uh, he may indulge us, gives us some document that we are able to respond to, because we'll be required as the state to respond to these uh, allegations. Thank you.
none of your time permission just a small joint mm -hmm. yes you run out with, with uh, and first of all thank you for the, the room that you have taken a deliver we really appreciate it uh, on the objection by learned council JB with it the second accused person. He was before you yesterday. This is what we are told. We need to file an affidavit to now show that he's injured. Look at him. I wish JV can turn and look at him. It is that serious. We don't need an affidavit. We have a live person. We have evidence before this court. The practice here is that the investigating officer is in court. He ought to take a witness stand and indicate to us whether the grievous harm that has been occasioned to a, a person under their protection is true or not. We cannot belittle that. Over and above that, Your Honor, the infringements that have happened go against Article 51, 1, and 2, which are very clear that even an arrested person, an, uh, anyone in custody, or even a convict still has rights, the basic human rights. This is a father to, to someone who has been beaten like this. It is, not, it is not business as usual. Article 29 is also very clear. You cannot subject a person to degrading and inhuman behavior. It is not business as usual. And we will not accept JV's uh, submission that if we take it in terms of what he submitted yesterday, you violate someone's right, then you come and say this court can only watch and take us to the high court. No, this court cannot be blind to people who are subject to this court. We will say this, we will apply to this court, and the applications being made by my learned colleague, Mr. Ndegwa, are applications that ought to be had before this court. You know, I, I am very perplexed by the conduct of the infringed. The day his rights will be infringed, we shall still come before you. I object to that line of argument. Uh, I took it yesterday and I will not take it today. When my time comes to be in prison, the day... In the sense, uh, counsel, I'm on my feet kindly. I will uh, be dealt with at the time. Fine, thank you.
I have seen the second account, even as the issues surrounding where, how, and under what circumstances the injuries were sustained is being addressed. The accused persons have just been granted bail or bond. There are complaints about how they were treated in custody. It is necessary that they be given a chance to have their bail processed for those who are able to pay the bail. The defense counsel were raising serious issues based on evidence flowing from the bar, the bar for an orderly hearing of the applications being made by the defense. It is necessary that a formal application be filed and served so that the prosecution can file their responses if they deem fit to file the same. So the application be filed soon as possible and the matter be mentioned on Tuesday, 25th of July this year, to address the issues upon filing of the applications. We are, we are most by that. You, you may or you may not agree with my direction. We agree with them entirely. We okay. agree with them because it's mm. the, only, it's the only one problem that we foresee ourselves mm. facing. Mm. That the issues we are raising occurred in a police station. For us to be able to get a faith reform, we mm. must record a complaint before a police officer. Most likely, we have to record that complaint before that particular police station. You know, the question is, Will these people be ready to bite the hands that feed them? So we, we foresee a problem here. So if you can just facilitate the process, a further order which is facilitative in nature, that this complaint be recorded with iPod, so that your owner will mm. have an OB somewhere, mm. and a, 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 a P3 form will subsequently ensue. Because even if we go to the officers, so mm. to the hospital, Without that P3 form, we still have problems in him being treated and that issue being addressed. I don't know whether my United friends agrees with mm. the position, Mr. Kutch. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Ndegwa. I'm not sure whether IPOA needs an order to receive a complaint. Do they? Uh, our, our issue is where do we record <laughs> this complaint? If this court is pursuing the protection and upholding mm. of the Bill of Rights, you can compel the OCS. Uh, 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 police station to take our complaint so that then if he doesn't, we'll have them to come before you once, once again and tell you that the OCS has declined to take our complaint. You want to just assist court? Uh, we undertake uh, the RCIO is here, Mr. Kipro. Just a minute, Mr. Dengo. Just come down, Mr. Dengo, kindly. Mr. Kipro, just a short court, just stand up that we will get the complaint recorded at the National Police Station today. I will talk to council today, direct them to uh, contact. This person, who are you? Please have a seat. Eh? You, see, you see now we are behaving. Are we making a gang inside the courtroom? <laughs> so that we start shouting at each other. I think Mr. Ndegwa, you have the discretion out of experiences of many years. Yes, sir. Uh, if you have somebody who is alleging to be sick, is alleging to have been assaulted, yes, sir. if I were in your position, the best thing I would do is to ensure the person gets out as fast as possible yes, and gets medical attention as fast as possible. Yes, sir. Uh, because there could be external, but you cannot see the internal injuries, if any. Yes, sir. You go to hospital, get your treatment notes. Then once the person is okay, then you can then follow up the other issues. First things first. So please, if you follow what I'm telling, talk there. We are going to have a break. I'll be back in a short while on Tuesday.